We did it, we made it to the final week and a half of Beachtober. I have no clue what the prompts are, so let's get started. Prompt number 22 is village. Do you know what? If I had played Animal Crossing, I would so do that. And I'm sure a lot of other people will, but I never got a chance to play it because I wasn't allowed it. And I don't have a Switch, so. I have no clue where we're going with this one, so good luck to future me. Mm. For the first prompt of week four, we're drawing an alpine village, but more like a countryside, really, with a random Dutch windmill. The cutest little village. I'm using these SimTap acrylic markers because they are super juicy and we want to create a nice colourful landscape. The style is slightly abstract. I mean, it doesn't start like that, but kind of goes off the rails and ends up being a far more messy style. Blocking in the whole of that base layer now, it's a lot easier to imagine the finished piece once there's no white left on the page. There's a few houses, a path, and some very, very abstract trees. I'm attempting to layer this piece now to pull it all together, adding highlights and shadows to the gaps to infer trees, some texture for the path and on the houses, but you know what? This isn't working. Neo colour to the rescue. Maybe. We're adding loose lines and a lot of texture. Sometimes when I use these pastels, they can really complete a piece and add what's been missing. Today though, this isn't the case. But this is a monthly challenge. We've got a lot to do. And it's good to know when to just move on from a piece. But we have a lot of really interesting prompts coming up. We're going to be using acrylic gouache for the first time, going back to endearing, creating portraits, animals, swords, food. I can't wait to show you. Prompt number 23 is party. I mean, you could use it as an opportunity to do a portrait or you could make it a little bit like New Year's Eve themed, doing something like that, confetti. I'm reaching in the random prompt part now to see if we'll get something that we can actually use for this next prompt. And it's glasses. When I saw glasses, I genuinely thought of actual glasses on someone's head, but everyone in the live stream had such good ideas and somebody had the idea of including a champagne glass instead, which is literally genius. I wish I had an imagination like that. Yes, of course we can include a champagne glass. They're at a party. Going in with watercolor and the wet on wet technique, with some light pink shades before moving on to the face. This was difficult. I tried to do the wet on dry technique and add lots of highlight and blush to this face, but it didn't work. You can see it's super patchy. I'm trying my hardest to figure out how to use this paper with watercolor. And whilst it's getting a little bit easier, it's still not working. Adding some eyebrows, eyes and hair to try and make a face appear. Because I'm struggling to trust the process with this one. Obviously, she needs a party hat. Some red nails, jewelry and wine. I used the same colors all over for this piece and I like that it looks subtle. It looks cohesive. Doesn't have a lot of contrast but I think it works. Though that smile is a little bit scary. Just grabbing some pencils now to add definition and also a pink and gold metallic gel pen for some highlights, jewelry and confetti. I didn't use a reference for the confetti so don't look at it too closely. Prompt number 24 is radish. I think I'm gonna use this one as an opportunity to actually draw a radish because ages and ages ago in the Daily Doodle Diary, I'll show you. I drew this cute little onion and it was a lot of fun. So I think making a radish is just gonna be fun. For the first and only time this challenge, we're reaching for the acrylic gouache. I got some fun pastel shades for my birthday recently that I really wanted to use. That haul will be coming shortly, so keep an eye out. And it's actually going to be the third birthday haul that's now up on my channel. This is a very limited colour palette. Shell pink, carmine, viridian and mint green. All straight from the tube. And our tray is the lid from this chocolate box. It works. We're not going to be mixing today. First, we need to fill the entire background with this gorgeous pastel pink colour. Now that the background is all done, we're reaching for carmine to paint in these radishes. This really is the 
perfect shade. The leaves are going to be painted in with Viridian and it's a super simple style. This might have been one of the most fun pieces this Peachtober. Just because it's so simple and I didn't really have to think. Though I was a little bit disappointed by how transparent this green is, I was really hoping it would be more opaque. Time to paint in the frame and once this is complete the piece really starts to come together. My aim for the frame was to make it look like leaves. Does that come across? It's quite subtle but the whole piece is, it's kind of minimalist. Honestly it's the kind of style that I do but then completely overdo. Feeling like it needs more details or some pastels for texture but a lot of the time it really doesn't. I did end up grabbing some acrylic markers last minute just because the leaves were quite patchy and there was no separation between them because they're all literally the same color. Same with the radishes. It just needed a tiny bit of shadow to separate them and I really like this finished painting. We're making some pretty good progress. Now onto prompt 25, stone. You could use watercolor. You could do like some stones, a load of pebbles on a beach or something. That could just be like a fun, cute piece. Or you could do like a plant pot with stones. I don't know which route we're gonna go with this one. I had no ideas for this prompt. Not good ones. Somebody suggested a sword in a stone, which is cool, but can I pull it off? I don't really draw swords. How can I make this look my own? Well, we're grabbing India ink and using it straight from the bottle, drawing some weird spirals and dots over water for the background. I don't know what that's about. Plus some textures on the rock, which I think worked really well. Then I added a slight undertone to the sword, just a light layer of watered down ink. And in a crazy turn of events, we're adding color. I'm going to make this my own by adding pink, of course. Well, coral pink, mauve shadow, and warm gray. All shades that we've already used for this challenge. And really, they're the colors that I've been leaning to. I just think they're so pretty. As for the process, I'm completely winging it. No reference, just fun, and kind of a fantasy look. That's what I'm going for. The colors were really difficult to blend, but you know what? I think it works. And that gray undertone underneath worked perfectly. Can you see how these colors are just like a more muted version? Like they fit. They don't completely pop and stand out. They actually fit in with this piece. But obviously not enough because I'm reaching for the India ink again. This time we're adding far more contrast, darkening the edge of the sword and adding some more splatters. This drawing is bold and different and I kind of love it. Now for number 26, backpack, which I'm sure is one of the Inktober prompts. The first thing that popped into my head was Dora the Explorer. I think that could be fun. We could draw Dora the Explorer in my art style. That could be cute. Time to grab the juicy acrylic markers again because for some reason when I thought of my art style, I thought of these. I guess maybe I just wanted to use the markers. I mean, you can see Dora is quite 2D, so it could work. Finding her skin tone was impossible though. This is the closest match I could find. If Artex could make a skin tone set for these markers, then that would be great because oh boy, was this a struggle. My thinking was we just have to do the base layer. Then we can layer and it will all come together. Yeah, that didn't happen. Some of the colors are a pretty good match. The backpack, that's a good purple shade. The landscape behind Dora. If you asked me, I never would have remembered that that's what it looked like. But seeing it all painted, 100% it's all coming back. So I wanted to do Dora the Explorer Justice but we don't have the right colors so I'm using bold colors as substitutes. Bright red for blush, cream for highlights. But this isn't working. What on earth have I created? How am I going to fix this? Can I even fix this? We're going to layer. That's usually the answer to art problems. Unless it's watercolor and then it's pretty much over. We're layering brown and purple to try and make it look a little bit more normal. I tried to go over the base skin tone again but it pretty much covered everything. So instead we have bold shadows. 
which I have done before. I painted Medusa in a similar style, so maybe we can make this work. Adding detail to the background, which is really bringing the nostalgia. I love it. It looks like I remember. Some shadows and highlights to the hair, some extra contrast. I also tried and failed dry brushing this tree because these markers are super juicy right it just didn't work like before i did it for greenhouse in last week's episode but this tree does in fact not look like bark some final highlights and we're done it's crazy it does kind of look like dora though so i'll take it now we're moving on to prompt 27. Grass. We've had sprout, which was quite similar to bud. Tree trunk, plant, they were all the same year. And then 2023, we had sprig, which again is quite similar to sprout and bud. Okay, we haven't had grass, but we've had a few similar ones. I'm going to have to really get sketching for that one and generating ideas because that's going to be hard to make interesting. For the prompt grass, we're painting a cute little cow in a field full of grass and corn, but it's watercolour and this paper, so wish me luck. This paper does not handle watercolour well. I mean, it's only a royal talons. We're using the wet on wet technique and adding some blue for the sky, grass and brown for this baby cow, because this is one of those cute highland fluffy ones. But what is this? I had to use the hairdryer and it dried patchy as anything. Though honestly, it probably would have done that anyway. Adding more watercolour, but it's not helping. How am I gonna fix this? Colour pencils? Yeah, maybe? Drawing in the fur and grass, then going back to paint and back to pencils, constantly back and forth until I painted in that eye and the piece stopped looking so tragic. So this is what we have. It's a cute little cow in a field. Next up for prompt 28, pony. Honestly, I drew two horses for the March of Robots art challenge and they're really difficult. Their legs bend in such weird ways. So I don't really want to draw another horse. I don't know, I'll have to have a think about it. Wetting the page because we're going in with watercolour again for this piece. Using various shades of pink for a nice blurry subtle background before grabbing a purple to define this horse's face. Horses are difficult. I didn't really want to paint one, but the prompt is literally pony. So we have to paint one. This piece is a human with a ponytail, riding a pony with a ponytail. So really, it's a triple pony. Another one of those great ideas that I wouldn't have been able to do without the help of you guys, so thank you. Though, have I done it justice? I really hope I have. It is a loose style though. I'm trying to define the face a little bit more with watercolour because for this painting, I'd really like it to be loose. Kind of like the ponytail that's flowing about. Colour pencils are easier, but they have a textured look that I just wasn't really after for this one. Layering a lot more though, honestly, I feel like I should have added more to the horse and not just the person because the person is looking very purple and probably has a little bit too much contrast. Well, anyway, that's enough watercolor for this Peachtober challenge. Now I'm done. Let's move on to something else. Number 29 is break. Quite like that. That's quite open-ended. You can just do anything that's kind of broken. That's a good prompt. Alcohol markers. We're drawing a plane taking off to go on holiday. A break. And we're not going for realism here. Some fun colours, only four, in a simple style. And we have actually already used this reference before for a challenge. A while back now, we filled a tiny sketchbook in two days using watercolour with videos that I took whilst on holiday in Fortiventura. I've popped that video down below if you want to take a look after this one. This particular scene is on the very first page of that sketchbook. I don't know why, but I love to record the plane taken off, so I actually had quite a few to choose from. But since we 
repainted it last time, I thought it would be nice to do the same scene but draw it instead with alcohol markers. And the second part of this idea is to grab a black acrylic marker and paint the border. It's in the shape of a window, but it looks like a frame. I've made a few pieces like this lately and love them. I mean, we literally did it for Radish. It is a different concept than drawing something that's broken, but I couldn't resist the opportunity to draw something from my holiday again. A final little start and this piece is all done. Prompt number 30 is Pearl. Ooh, we're doing a lot of different things, but any opportunity to do a portrait, I'm gonna take. The original plan for this prompt was to paint a portrait, you saw that? But we're going in a different direction now. Grabbing the huge messy gouache palette now for the final time. The finish line is really in sight. I'm mixing yellow for sand and blue for sea, but accidentally put the blue down first at the bottom, so here we are. I guess there's no sand in this ocean. This mess really didn't go to plan. It was fun but it doesn't look good. In the middle, we have a pearl in an oyster, a pink tartar, if you will. Obviously, ours is a bit more cute with cream and pink tones, but of course this is gouache. So every time it dries, it turns into a completely different color, literally the wrong color, because gouache is genuinely the hardest medium in my opinion. There's a frame of pearls and we're also mixing green for some kelp, but it's not going to plan. Everything is drying darker, so I'm grabbing this big tube of white gouache and we're gonna use it straight from the tube. I mean, you can see already that it's much whiter, which is perfect. Pearls are very light. Gouache is all about layering, so I'm going over every section a million times until it actually stays light enough. Whilst the painting process was frustrating, I'm glad I stuck with it because by the end it's actually looking like pearls. A few random barnacles on each, which was also suggested, and now we're done! Here's what I've made for the prompt pearl. The final prompt of Peachtober 2024, which is usually Halloween themed because it's the 31st, is spider. I don't like spiders. It's not going to be realistic, it's not going to be scary, don't worry about that. We are not drawing a spider. Just going to get that out there now. I'm not a fan of them, and a lot of people aren't, so I don't want to draw something that's such a common phobia. We're drawing a cute little kid trick-or-treating as Spider-Man. The initial sketch looked quite different, but to be honest, I found the perfect reference for this one. So that's what we're using. The face is taking a lot of layers. We're still on gouache and it's hard. The big thing I realized whilst painting this cute little baby boy is that they kind of look like old men. The features are the same. The background was a chaotic move. Muddy yellow definitely was not the right choice. Filling in that final section of white with the blue from the Spider-Man suit. And honestly, I'm starting to see it now. Blue eyes to match. A spider's web in the background, since there's not a lot we can do with this now anyway. Plus, I mean, it's the last prompt. I am tired. Every year, it's the same. Four decent weeks. And then that final week and a half is chaotic as anything. We're doing it, but it doesn't have to be good at this point. It just has to be over. We have to complete it. The patterning on the clothes isn't accurate, so don't look at it too closely. It looks like Spider-Man, and that's good. But the big part is it's done. It's done. We are done, and I'm calling it there. That's it, we completed Peachtober. Which one is your favorite? If you've enjoyed this challenge, you'll probably like my other monthly challenges, which I popped in the description. This month, whether you started a challenge, completed a couple, or completed the whole thing, well done. It's not easy to come up with these ideas from prompts, but you've done amazing. I hope you've had a good month. I'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.